you may have seen on my channel that we have just got our first electric vehicle and we've lived with it for the last few months without charging at home except for the odd hour or two with the back door open. We are able to charge at my work which has meant that 98% of the time we've had all we need for day to day activities. But I can imagine that being able to charge at home would give us that extra flexibility to wake up with a full charge, not have to worry about whether we can find an available charger at work or, or charging out and about in public. Charging at home would be ideal. Unfortunately for us, this could prove fairly expensive, but I've managed to come up with a solution that I think will do all we need it to do for about 300 quid using this charger from EV Dance. Let me explain. So first, some context. Um, we bought this Nissan Leaf secondhand at the end of January. We want to be able to charge it at home to help us do longer journeys, particularly journeys two days in a row, but also to get the lowest cost charging by using time of use tariffs. We park in a space just across the lane at the back of our house, so to install a charger there would need to dig a bit of a trench to install a cable from the house to put in a charge point at the back. At the same time, we might be looking to move the fence at the back uh, on our garden and maybe extend our parking area slightly, make some space for our bins and do a bit of landscaping work more broadly. And this feels like a bit of a big piece of work that we don't need to do straight away. So I've been looking for a solution um, that would do what we need without all that work. Is that possible? Well, the conclusion that I've come to is that we will install an external socket in our backyard and use this EV Dance charger to, with a three pin plug to charge as we need. And I can hear alarm bells going off already in your head that we can't do this, it won't give us enough mileage, it's dangerous to charge from a three pin plug for long periods of time. Okay, I take that. But I think it's gonna do a great job for us, at least for the medium term. So let's just think through why I think that and respond to some potential concerns. First, it won't give us enough mileage. Well, on the cozy octopus tariff, we get eight hours of low cost electricity each day on Octopus Go, five hours. And charging at these times would mean that cost to drive the car would be about three or four pence per mile, or less than seven pound 50 for a full battery of over 200 miles of range. The EV Dance charger gives us options to charge at different rates by changing the amps that the charger supplies. So as a minimum, we could charge at six amps, and this would give us a power of around 1.4 kilowatts, or around five, five miles range per hour of charge. We could charge at higher amps at eight amps, 1.8 kilowatts or six and a half miles per hour, 10 amps or 2.3 kilowatts, eight to 10 miles per hour. And at the max rating of 13 amps, almost three kilowatts at 10 to 12 miles per hour. At best, we could get 80 miles of low cost rates each 24 hour period uh, that this was plugged in on Octopus Cozy or 50 miles overnight at low cost rates. We don't drive long distances every day. So from my perspective, this would do exactly what we needed to do. If we got in late one night and was due to leave early, uh, maybe this would be a slow way of doing things and we'd have to, we maybe have to top up out and about. But for us, this would be very, very rare. So I think that this charging at this slow rate is gonna do the job for us, at least for now. The next thing uh, to say is that people would suggest that it's dangerous to charge using a three pin plug at 13 amps for long periods. And that's potentially fair. Um, the rating of a standard domestic socket tends to be 13 amps per socket. So charging at the highest rating on this charger does risk causing some issues. So that's probably not what I plan to do each time I plug in. Um, maybe setting it at the eight amps or the 10 amps would be plenty to fill up um, to fill up enough each time we plug in, but not risk tripping out the supply or overheating the charger. And if we wanted that extra 700 watts or about two miles extra charge per hour, we could, uh, we could up the supply on the charger for a short period of time. I feel pretty happy about that as a compromise. 
and I guess as a slight side note, um, any heat that comes from the plug socket whilst it's charging or from the charging cable, it's not necessarily a bad thing as it would be heating the air around our heat pump, which could increase the efficiency of the heat pump a little bit. You know what, I'm always looking for gains in efficiency. So I reckon this could suit us for a good while to come. Let's have a look inside the box. Okay, so all this really comes down to the quality of the charge cable. Is this gonna do the job for us? Is it gonna work as I imagine? And is the build quality good enough to last us using it regularly for a long period of time? So we shall see. So this is the portable, well, not that portable for us. We're gonna have a permanent electric vehicle charger from EV Dance. Charged up to 13 amps which could give nearly three kilowatts of charge. This is eight meters long and it's IP66 rated for, uh, for external. Comes with a OLED display, a storage bag, and the changeable function between six amps, eight amps, 10 amps, and 13 amps. Cool. Let's have a look. I mean, I think, first of all, like it's, it's an incredibly small box where it could be an eight meter cable in this little bag, which actually be brittle if it was in the boot of the car permanently. Okay, instruction leaflet, flip through, read that. And here's the cable and charger. Let's have a look. Okay, there's the plug for the car. Looks like nice, good quality. I guess we'd keep that plug on when we weren't charging. Here is the charger. Oh, well, a bit that's controllable. So three pin plug drops down to this control unit, charger, through the eight meter cable into the plug. Right, we're gonna use it, so we might as well get it all open. Okay, so first impressions, um, Solid bit of kit. So matte finish on this cable, which, yeah. I guess the concern I've got is if we've got this um, going over the track on the outside, it may well have people and cars, even the bin lorry going over it. So it might need some protection and that's something there. We'll have a look at. But yeah, everything seems really sturdy well built, which is cool. Nice long cable. Good stuff. Let's go plug it in and see what it looks like. So this is our new external socket. It looks nice and sturdy. Let's get it open and it's got two plugs ready to use. So that was plugged in. And I guess the problem is this cable can't stay like this long term. Put in that, there. that could work nicely. Okay, the minute that's plugged in at 13 amps, and I can change that. I can change that to six, eight, 10, 13. Cool, set it at 10 amps, charging at 2.38 kilowatts. 
Perfect. By the way, that's a heat pump running. Could you hear it running at all? I'm not sure. I guess a few more comments to say um, about this charger. I mean, when it arrived, I was amazed at how small it packs away. This is a charging cable that is eight meters long. It also comes in six meters and 10 meter versions. Um, and that should be plenty for us. It's rated IP66, which is perfect for storage outside if I want to leave this ready to go outside all the time. And the charger feels sturdy, it feels well be built, it feels good quality. Um, the screen is very basic, but I'm not sure we need much more. And changing the rating is very simple by pressing the button. Overall, I'm happy with the simplicity and what this will facilitate for us. I have been sent this charger for free, no wonder I'm happy. Uh, that is a great result and very kind of EV dance, but they are available online for between 150 and 180 pounds. Um, EV dance also makes a charger that connects to a commando socket that would be able to charge quicker than a three pin plug. Um, and they've given me a, di a link for a discount code, which I'll include in the description below. So there we go. Um, external socket that we will use for other stuff as well. 140 quid from our local electrician, um, meaning that we can charge from a three pin plug with this EV dance cable, which could be 180 quid online to our car on the other side of the track. I guess the last piece in the puzzle uh, will be to get some kind of mat or, or cable protector that will protect the cable from other cars driving over it, which, ha which will happen occasionally and also to make sure that people don't trip on the cable as they walk past. There are a few options online that could be up to 50 quid. Um, I'll buy one and we'll see what happens. So I think overall, I've got a charging solution for the medium term that could have cost us around 370 quid. And I think will do the job that we need it to do for charging at home. I've not got a cost for installing a, a uh, a fast charger uh, uh, on the other side of, of the, the lane but my gut feeling reading around for a simple EV charge point installation we might be looking at £800 or more um, with the challenge of getting the cable over the track at the back of our house I think that this could be a bit pricier so it feels like this solution is value for money at least for the medium term but I guess I should say, just work through some of the benefits of getting a better charger installed. If we had a dedicated EV charger with our single phase supply, we could provide up to seven kilowatts of charge, I guess throttle back slightly by our onboard charger on the Nissan Leaf, but this would be able to supply 30 to 35 kilowatt hours of charge each night at low costs, which would be around 50 to 60% of our battery capacity and over a hundred miles in a five hour period. So what we're sacrificing then is about 50 miles of charge each night. Um, and as we don't use our car every day, I actually think this is manageable. And I can plan in advance for having a nearly full battery without having the quick charge available over several days. I guess another thing to note that we're sacrificing on top of that is that if we had a smart charger that could respond to price signals, uh, we could both help the grid in using excess energy that otherwise might be curtailed but also we could potentially hunt for lower prices by allowing Octopus or another supplier to control when we would be charging. Um, we'd, just, we'd have a car plugged in, uh, topping up when, the best, when, we, when, the, when it's the best time for the grid, rather than just assuming that overnight is best. So I guess we're also sacrificing some of that smarter automatic charging that will one day be a significant part of all of our energy system. But for now, I am happy. In the future, having a smart vehicle to grid charger would be very attractive, but not for now. I suspect that this may provoke some comments from you guys that already have an electric vehicle and a smart charger that is taking advantage of Octopus Intelligent Go or, or a similar charging, um, or a similar tariff. And you know what? I would welcome those comments here. For us, for now, this is gonna do the job. And if and when we do some work at the back of the house, we may look to install a proper charge point. Until then, I'm really happy with this charger from EV Dance, charging from an external socket, a three pin plug, um, as we need it to, and delivering all the charge that we need.